Hi, this is Caroline Pointer with FourYearFamilyStory.com, and um, I've decided to do my popular genealogy technology links post as a video series so every week or during the week as I'm reading I save the links that I think that are important that would be important of technology links for researchers that might apply to y'all um, and and I save them in my my bookmarking system called pocket it's an app that's available on the web and, and it syncs to your iPhone your Android or your tablet or your I iPad device um, and so uh, during the week as I'm reading I'll bookmark them in there and I tag them down here with Gentech which is just my little way of tagging them for this article or now for this video series and um, so I wanted to go ahead and just kind of kind of do something different and make it a video series so let's go ahead and get started. I will highlight, I've got quite a few links in here, so don't start groaning. I'm not going to highlight all of them in the video, but in my blog post on my website, foryourfamilystory.com, I will have all the links to the ones that I highlight in the video, as well as the ones I don't highlight. So you get the best of both worlds, and you get the explanation in the video. So let's get started first one that's pretty big is Adobe Reader, uh, PDF Reader, has, Adobe now has confirmed that they have definitely some vulnerabilities in version 10 and 11, which those versions are the newest versions out there. So if you've upgraded to them, just know that there are some security issues with them, and they are vulnerable. And so you're going to want to read Brad Chakos' uh, article on PCWorld.com um, about those um, exploits or security issues. Um, he also gives you three alternatives to using Adobe PDF Reader, which is the free version. Cool, because he talks about the security issues, he talks about some alternatives, and then he also talks about some other things you might want to look at that have security issues as well on your computer. So take a look at his article. The next one is an article by Rick on PCWorld.com again about the Lazarus add-on that you can put on your Firefox or your Chrome browser. Um, what it does, you know, when you're filling out forms and whatnot on online or maybe uh, when you're on Blogger and you're blogging and it hasn't saved yet and you lose power or something, or you're filling out a web form of some kind online and somehow your connection gets um, disconnected for whatever reason and you lose your data that you've entered. Well, if you have Lazarus, on your web browser, either Chrome or Firefox, and you're in that particular browser that Lazarus has been installed on, Lazarus app, what it does is it saves in the background, it's running constantly in the background and saves your data so that you can recover re, uh, recover text or recover the form. So uh, that's kind of a lifesaver. <laughs> No pun intended. Okay, the pun was intended. But anyway, take a look at his article. He talks about it, goes through it step by step, and, and uh, I think it's kind of interesting. We, we fill out a lot of forms nowadays online, so it's very helpful. Uh, next one I wanted to point out was uh, Wonderless 2 for iPad. Finally, I've been waiting for it. Uh, before Christmas, they came out with the iPhone 1, and, the, and, um, and so I've been waiting for it to, to come out on iPad. I love Wonderlist. What it is is a... a it's kind of like a, uh, a task management system, very easy to use, very intuitive. I love it. If you haven't tried it, I highly suggest it. That it's available on the web as a web app. It's now available on your iPad, on your iPhone, and they all sync. So if you make a list on, the, on your computer and then you take it to the grocery store or to an art library or an archives and you have all your to-dos right there uh, with you in your mobile device. So take a look at this article because it, it is from the actual uh, wonder, wonderkinder.com blog, which is the developer for Wonderlist 2. So take a look at it and it gives you all the new features that it has for specifically the iPad. Um, here's one. Here's one for professionals, either professional genealogists or small businesses who ha who use QuickBooks online. Now they have an iPad version, so you'll want to check out this article on uh, check out this article on TechCrunch.com, uh, detailing all there is to know about their new app for the iPad. Very handy. 
Here's one. If you tried to use your Google Reader <laughs> uh, last Sunday or Monday, you probably may have had some problems, maybe. I don't know. Not, I don't think it was 100%, but it was de definitely doing some funny stuff where people weren't, weren't able to use it very well or use it at all. Uh, really, if you go look at Google Reader, I think in this article, Melissa Tolentino explains um, that, wow, they're, the official blogs, blog post or blog for Google Reader has not been posted on since October 31st, 2011, she says. Um, that's a big, big concern because people want to know what's going to happen to Google Reader. And that is really big in the gen world because online we read a lot of blogs and we t generally use Google Reader to help us organize all those RSS feeds. So what, who knows what's going to happen to Google Reader. I don't even, I'm not even saying that there is something that's going to happen to it or if it's going to go away. I don't know. Um, to say anything would be very speculative at best. However, what you might want to do is look at some of the alternatives that she lists here for Google Reader so that if something were to happen, that you're not left in a lurch. So take a look at her article. And then I also have another one about sync RSS feeds to your iPhone with Byline. Again, it's by Joshua Lockhart from makeuseof.com. Here's a way to, to handle those RSS feeds without... Well, no, it actually works through Google Reader, so, but it is something you can take a look at because it is integrated with Instapaper as well as Pocket, which is what I'm using right now. So take a look at that. Also, <laughs> I read too many blogs. How can I get through them all? Somebody wrote in, that, that, who was it? Buried under blogs. I think we can all say that. We tend to, uh, our, our eyes are bigger than our time that we have to read blogs. Uh, Whitson Gordon answers it and he gives some great ideas for productivity of handling, handling reading blogs, um, especially in your Google Reader. So take a look at that. Oh, here's another one. Evernote uh, bought Hello, mm, I can't remember how long ago, but now they've upgraded it to 2.0 or updated it. Um, it's definitely a good way to get contacts in your iPhone if you're out at conferences or let's say you are a presenter and, and or not a presenter, but you know, you in your genealogy, genealogical society, um, you know, you have speakers who come in with their, here's a great app that you can grab their information, their contact information. They go over it step by step here, Bakari does. I hope I said their name right. Um, on makeyourself.com. But they go through step-by-step step of all the updates and how to use it, so definitely check that article out. And here's another one, Workflowy. It's another task management app. Um, right before Christmas, they came out with iPhone and iPad apps, which was awesome because before it was just a web-only app. I'm not sure if it's for Android. Uh, I'd have to check on that. But what's so great right now is if you have it on iPhone and iPad, now there's an update, the new update means that you can work offline now, which is really great if you have a limited data plan on your iPhone um, and you're not near Wi-Fi or if you have a Wi-Fi only uh, iPad. Now you can do work on your, your to-do lists and organization of your to-do list, which is really fun on Workflowy. If you've never tried it, I highly recommend it. Um, but now you can do it offline or, you know, like on an airplane or something or anywhere offline. and then it will automatically sync, once you're back online, it will automatically sync uh, and sync all your changes when it reconnects. So definitely take a look at Alan Henry's article on lifehacker.com on the workflow update. And what's another good one? Here's one. Write for Dropbox is a, a plain text editor for Dropbox users. Um, if you find that you need it, you would love to take notes. It's a great notepad. Um, and it automatically synced with your Dropbox accounts. So definitely take a look at that if that's something you're interested in. If you're a big Dropbox user and you want to make quick notes, that sync to the cloud. Um, ah, here's one. Back the last time when Smart Office 2 was uh, offered for free, I got it. It's regularly a $10 app. It's similar to Microsoft Office. Um, it definitely is. Um, is compliant with it so you can go in and out of it but um, it's very similar to Google Docs and you can share with Google Docs so it's a it's a great uh, word processor app so now it's free it's ten dollars usually so get it while it's free 
I don't know how long it'll be for you, but definitely take a look at 9to5toys.com on their article on it and get it downloaded. And here's the last one. I'm not an Android person because I have all iOS stuff, but here I found one for you. Here's a, an update, the Google Now widget, which is really, really cool. When you read through this article, it's going to talk about, um, it's done by, an, uh, let's see, who is it written by? James Kendrick on ZDNet.com, who is an Android user. And he goes through this new widget for notifications. It kind of likened Siri, likened to it, likened this to Siri being a, like a personal assistant for his Android phone. So take a look at it. Um, it looks kind of cool when I read through it. I was like, wow, maybe I'll get an Android. Night. But anyway, take a look at it. If you prefer Android, that's what you have. That's your cup of tea. Then you'll definitely want to take a look at the Google Now widget for it. And there's more, but you're going to just go to my website. For your family story.com, I will have the whole list of all the ones that I found in, in my pocket, the genealogy technology links in my pocket. And we'll do this once a week and see how it works. And I guess that's it. This has been Caroline Pointer with For Your Family Story.com. Thanks.